Hi everybody, I hope you are doing well. So today I will uh, introduce you to my new uh, background painting tutorial. Uh, this tutorial will have many different parts. The, the first part will be the layout, the second part the local color, and then on the third part the final background. So it's maybe a little bit weird, but um, I work a lot on different color keys for different studios this last two years and after a while I needed a very specific technique to easily paint the backgrounds but also to modify the colors of the objects and the mood of the room because sometimes we needed to, to, do, to create a color for uh, a room uh, during the day as an example and then uh, do a second variation uh, at night. So this technique is very great. You lose maybe this uh, nice painting feeling, but it's cool. And you will see uh, at the end, I will do another version of this painting and I paint the flattened picture. So this is also interesting because on when I worked on the color key, sometimes they told me, okay, the, the color key is approved or we would like you to, to uh, paint it a little bit more and add details to the color key so we can show it uh, to the client. And so I flatten the picture, I keep my old PSD with all the layers and then I just paint and add some very uh, specific details. So this is a very great technique, I hope you will uh, like this technique but also everything I will show you. Uh, I decided to split this tutorial because uh, there are a lot of information and I painted this picture in almost uh, 18 hours so it was too long. So I, my first uh, part will be uh, only on the layout, the second one will be on the local color and the third one is the painting. I will do a second video where I change the mood of the room. So you will see it's very interesting because in almost 10 minutes I can have uh, a day version and then the night version and add some uh, lights. So this is great and I think for most of you this will be very interesting. Uh, also as a last uh, piece of information, uh, before every uh, part I will do a very tiny introduction where I will talk about the tools I used and the specific uh, maybe uh, plugins or stuff I used to do the layout, the drawing, the painting, etc. So you will have every information and because I speed up the, the painting, sometimes you will see something and you will tell yourself, oh, but what, what did he do? And so you will have all the information, I hope. Again, uh, maybe I will miss some information. If you have any question, please send me a message or drop a comment and I will be very happy to answer to your question. Let's dive in. So this is a short video only to introduce you to uh, the technique and the software I use to do the layout. Uh, I really like to use a TV Paint when I draw, so I decided to do my layout in TV Paint. Most of the time I do the layout in TV Paint. I don't like very much to draw in Photoshop. I don't know why, it's just me, but you can do this uh, layout on Photoshop, but also uh, on paper if you want. So I will just show you uh, how I proceed and also the tools I use. Uh, maybe you've seen, you've seen I created a new video uh, only talking about the tools. I create and updated uh, some new tools and on this uh, tool panel, I only use the pencil. So this is a very simple jet black pencil and I really like to paint with it and use it. The first pass I did for uh, the background is to apply a simple grind. So you can find on my uh, tool a, gr a grind also. So you can just, I will just create a new layer so you can understand what I did. I just uh, put the grind on my canvas and command T and I deform the cry to have my perspective. I really like to use uh, this technique. It's 
it's rough, it's not that precise, but uh, in a few seconds I can have a perspective and I can draw on top of it so it's easier for me uh, to, um, to understand yes, the perspective and uh, to have more ideas and to draw on something more uh, believable. I use this technique also when I do storyboard but because when you are drawing on storyboard it's important to have the environment, it's not only the character but it's also the environment and the, every time I have a, a, a white paper the first thing I do is to put the uh, grid on the bottom, on the floor or uh, anywhere else. So you have your perspective but also when you export your um, a storyboard for I don't know the layout department or the background department they understand the perspective and it's easier for them to uh, paint and work on top of it so it's very important but also it's very useful also you will see it's not definitive because the second pass I will do I will use the guideline so it's a small plugin inside of TV paint and I will recreate a better perspective to uh, finish my layout. But just before that, I will hide this layer. So I, I drew two grides, one for uh, the floor and uh, two for the wall. So I am almost my perspective. And then I did a first rough. So as you can see, the rough is very rough, but it's enough for me. I just drop my ideas and then I work I will work uh, from that uh, after. As you can see also, I put a character uh, on the layout. It's very important because sometimes when you're only working on an, on an environment, uh, you have some scale issues. So here I just draw Boo Boo, uh, one of my character, to have um, the scale of the room. And I will remove her later, but it's important to have it yeah, to, to just have something uh, believable. The second step I did, I just duplicate my rough pass and I change the opacity of the rough pass. Rough pass. Also, I flip the picture because I prefer to have the picture uh, like that. It's, yeah, you can choose. So I, I created a guideline, so I will just show it. So as you can see, it's very subtle, but I have some perspective grind. And if I hide everything and I enable it, I can draw, oh, sorry, I will need to create a new layer. I can draw and every lines are uh, connected to this grid so I can uh, draw in perspective. It's very, very useful and it's perfect for me because I really like to work very uh, rough on the first step and the second step I have to have something more believable and uh, clean so I use this tool to correct all my perspective issues and I add a lot of perspective issues you will see later on the video uh, some furniture I note on the right perspective but thanks to this tool I can um, I can put the furniture in the right perspective also you will see I did a video on this tool on uh, on Patreon so you can go and check it it's very short and you will understand more the perspective tool but I will quickly uh, show you how it works so I create a two-point perspective by niche points two like that and the thing is the first step is to uh, create um, a one-point perspective so I use my grid as a layout and I just drop my first point and then I drop my second points. Oh, sorry, I did something wrong. So if sometimes you have this problem, you drop the two points on the same place. So you need to edit guides here and you can move the second points on the right area. Sometimes also you will see it's very hard to find the perspective you use with thanks to the guides. So you just edit the guides and you can move them. All right, then you will see you have a lot of different uh, parameters, but you can um, here you can hide the grid. Here it's uh, if you uh, click on that, you en enable uh, the tool. So I will just uncheck guides. I enable the tool, and so I can use it. 
and if I don't want I just toggle this button. I don't give you too many information because you can go and check the other video and uh, yeah. So as you can see I use all of these uh, plugins and tools and I just uh, create this simple layout. As a last point you can see I have a lot of red characters. Uh, during the, the drawing uh, process I duplicate the red character to be sure about the proportions. Uh, to be honest my painting the proportions are very bad but it's I think it's all right because I will not animate a character just an environment so I think it's all right but it's always important to have a scale reference. No more talking uh, let's uh, give you I will give you more information uh, while watching the layout process. Thank you for listening. So I start, as I say, in my canvas in uh, TV Paint. I create some grids and I just apply them to have a basic perspective so I can start on something. I already had an ID when I started this uh, drawing, so I wanted to have a kitchen, something big with a lot of objects and details. And uh, yeah, I wanted a huge amount of details, so when I paint, I can show you uh, an easy, um, a process to paint something with a lot of objects because sometimes it can be very overwhelming to have a lot of objects and when you are working on a rush or on a studio and you have a very tight deadline uh, you don't know how to proceed and this is a very nice technique so we'll talk about all of that later but here uh, for the layout uh, I, it was my main goal to have a lot of objects so I can have a lot of colors and I can uh, paint something in a few hours uh, even if it's very complex. So as you can see I drew something very basic. I have some cubes uh, all around the room so I can understand uh, the intentions. I have some windows on the right, I have a huge table and I want a, a wood table in the middle of the kitchen. And then I have some ovens and a lot of uh, tools to have different materials and objects so I can uh, work all of that because it's always very interesting to all of these different materials to, to paint. I'm looking, I really want um, the eye to, to go to this stair in the middle of the picture. It's not very believable, the, the room is weird, but I don't mind, it was my goal to have a stair in the middle. And uh, just to increase uh, this uh, perspective, you know, I have a very central perspective, even if I have two points pers perspective, here it's mostly in the middle of the picture. And I increase this uh, composition uh, by creating another uh, stair on the right. I really like when I draw to uh, flip the canvas. It's very great because on TV Paint, it's uh, you have a shortcut to flip the picture. And so I do it all the time. And here it's funny because I started on uh, with a very... Uh, with the table on the right and the stairs on the left. And then I flip the picture and I prefer the, comp the flip composition. So I will keep the flip composition at the end when I will work on the colors. The first uh, goal I have is to uh, to create a rough because I, I don't mind if the perspective is uh, not good, if the scale is not right. I will work on the scale and the perspective later. I will use some tools to do that. You remember when we talk in the introduction, I have a perspective tool. And uh, I will use this tool to uh, to uh, to have a right perspective. As I said, I've placed a character in the middle of the picture, so I have a scale, and I can uh, change the size of my objects compared to this character. You will see in the final painting the scale is not utterly right, but uh, my goal was only to do a painting. I will not have any animation nor anything in this painting it was just an exercise and something i can show you how to to process again you will see i wanted to do the painting this way i don't do all the time the painting using this technique 
but you can paint you, you know you have different path uh, and you can choose the, the the one you prefer so here i created my guideline my perspective guideline and i'm i use it to uh, redo the the drawing on top so i will keep my rough pass and i will change uh, the opacity and then i will create a new layer and start to draw on top of it i had an hard time to find uh, the right point perspective but at the end i find something that was uh, similar it was quite the same so it's it's yeah it's fair enough i will keep that and i will start to draw as you can see i'm, I'm trying to correct uh, the problem i had on the rough version uh, for the table you know the table has a weird uh, size compared to the oven on the right etc and all of that i will uh, update it later as you can see on the top the perspective i drew was uh, very wrong but uh, thanks to the uh, perspective tool i will update all of that here it's a very rough layout it's not for production it's only for me but it's always important to be organized because when you're working on a painting a painting it's very complex you need to think about light about color about volumes composition uh, the appeal of the picture the storytelling etc uh, if you're working on the background you know you have maybe less storytelling elements to work on but again you have a lot of things you need to to care so it's always important to start with a good drawing even if you, you don't draw very well it's important to fix as much a uh, problem as possible sometimes when you are working on a production here uh, uh, i'm working on on the production and i already have the layout so for me it's perfect because i just need to work on the colors and sometimes we already have the color script so it's only full painting but here i don't have all of that so i need to uh, to work on these different elements and that's why i need to start with a, a good drawing with a nice perspective because imagine you're you're working on a painting and after a while you understand you have you had the wrong perspective and you try to fix it but it's always the same when you try to fix something it creates new problems so that's why it's important to be organized and sometimes uh, you will waste a little bit of time uh, when you do a drawing but you will win sometimes because you will not think about composition drawing perspective later when you will paint that's why it's a very important step and also sometimes it's very good to draw you know i really like uh, to do this kind of exercise uh, I don't do it, I don't often do it, but here it was it was interesting to do uh, a perspective and to add some objects and uh, it's always always cool to do that. Um, here I'm working on some tiles, you, as you can see I put some tiles on the right. I will remove them later, just an indication and it helps me to have a uh, a feeling of the scale and to drop some ideas you know sometimes you want to put some patterns on some areas of your picture uh, maybe you remove them later but it just to have uh, the global idea of the picture i add maybe a little bit too much details on some areas but uh, it's not a problem you know if you take some pleasure to draw and if you have the time it's it's a good thing to do <laughs> I'm working also on the carpet, uh, on the stairs, on the right. As you will see later, I add some objects when I'm doing the local color and also when I'm doing the final painting. I will remove some uh, details, modify some uh, elements. You will see the, mo the most important area I will remove is on the left between the two windows. I will create a column after a while because I don't like the, the look of um, this part. That's why I decide to uh, redraw it. And uh, that's why it's a very good technique because if you want to redraw something or if you want to uh, change the color or something or change the light orientation, it's perfect. 
because when I was working on the color script, you know, you don't have a lot of time, so you're working on the tiny format. You don't have a lot of time, and as I said, it's, you, it's very, it's important to to uh, respect the color of the characters of the environment. Most of the time, you have a color chart you need to follow. You know, some other artists created the color for the characters for the the environment, and so you need to keep that. So that's why you will have a layout or um, or a drawing or storyboard, anything else. First of all, you put the, the right color, the color of the characters, of the environment, etc. And then you will paint light and shadow. And later, you, will, you most often, you have a lot of free text. You need to change uh, some elements, to change the color, to modify the mood, etc. So it's important to have all of that on different layers. That's why this technique is very, very, very cool. I'm using this technique presently to do a fi final painting, but also it's a good idea. You can uh, use it only to create a color key. I may be uh, focusing too much on the colors aspects of the technique, and we will talk about that later. But here, just to uh, return and come back to the layout, um, I try to, to add as much detail and to have something very uh, believable. And uh, as you can see, sometimes I just pause and look at the drawing and, and ask myself, is this all right? Do I have the right scale? Is it appealing? Do I have a nice perspective, a nice feeling, what I want to achieve? And <clears throat> even if it's a drawing, you need also to think about light and color. Do I have enough place to have light later? Presently, I have two huge uh, windows on the left, so I think it's fair enough to have a, a nice lighting at the end. But sometimes, you know, maybe you don't have any windows. You need to think about light bulbs or that kind of stuff or where the light is. And also, you need to have uh, enough place to, to put the drop shadows because sometimes you, you, uh, you add a lot of objects everywhere, but when you drop the shadows, everything starts to be confusing. So when you draw, it's not only perspective, composition, etc. You need also to think about uh, the final picture, what you, you want to have. So when you are working on a movie or something else, most of the time you just try to fix some issues because some somebody just before you uh, design the environment, somebody just choose the color, etc. And when you work on the final illustration or the color key, you just you, you need to fix uh, the picture to have something appealing. And sometimes and most of the time you have issues and problem all around the room or uh, the space. That's why it's color key. It's very interesting, but sometimes it's very daunting because you need to find solutions all the time, but it's very, very interesting. And it's cool because it's a teamwork. So you're working on something and just before you, a lot of people worked on that. And at the end you have a result, and the audience just watch uh, these results. And it, it looks like seamless, you know, but a lot of people worked on that. Uh, for the windows, I try to be uh, as precise as I can because I will use that later to do my local color. Here is a cheat because the front window was quite flat. I just duplicate the windows and I um, use Command T and I transform uh, the drawing. So now I can put it in perspective. I really like to do that. Sometimes I just draw something very flat, I transform it and put it in perspective so so I can um, yeah I can reuse it somewhere else. It's the same technique compared to the grid, you know. Uh, it's funny because this part I'm, I, I, I'm struggling, I don't know how to design it, the middle part, and as I said later I will just remove it because uh, when I put the color and lighting on top of it, it's yeah it's quite ugly, I don't like it. Uh, here I'm drawing the, the tiles. It's rough, but it's just for me to to uh, to create a, a scale and a feeling of scale. I add some uh, useless details, but yeah, I like to do it. I was f um, I tr I think I will put later some trees behind 
before I just wanted to create a sky or something simple but the trees are, are cool because you will have this huge amount of green so I can play with that. I add a lot of details everywhere it's maybe useless but uh, it's for me it's great because when I will paint I will have less things to think about. Um, details are, are sometimes useless and sometimes they are very very important. You know, I'm working uh, presently on some backgrounds and I have some layouts and the layouts are very, very simple. And sometimes the art director asks us to add more details to find solutions because also sometimes you have tangents all around the place and because the layout is only a drawing or grayscale um, painting, you don't see all of that and you will need to fix that kind of problems later. Here also I try to avoid as much as I can the, the tangents. The perspective of the table, I, I didn't like it. The table was huge, so I decided just to uh, erase it and redo it. Um, sometimes it, you try to transform or, or to modify things, but it's better just to remove it and redraw it, you know. I just draw a flat version of the table and I will transform it and put it directly in the perspective. It's, as I said, something I really like to do because before I try to, to draw every tiles and everything in the perspective, but it's just all right to draw something flat. You transform it and you put it in the perspective. Here, I, I try to, uh, to uh, put it directly on the ground just to follow the perspective and I will also uh, put it on the top so I can have the top of the table but also the area on the ground so when I will put the chairs I have a reference. Again, you know, you don't have any rules, you can uh, transform, draw, you can do anything you want. If you want to take a picture and redraw on top of it, just an area, it's all right, you know. The, the important, I think, is uh, to understand what you're doing or to try to understand what you're doing. And also, the most important, it's the final result, you know, we, we want something appealing at the end. So if you have some an hard time to draw on top, uh, a chair or something in the perspective it's all right to 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 ask for a little bit of help also here i'm using you know traditional tools but you can use um, cg if you want to use blender or maya you know uh, these softwares are very cool and when i worked on um, on the studio at micros you know we, i worked on spongebob and other movies uh, we use CG all the time. Sometimes you have some huge place. You already have a, a, a rough layout. Someone did a rough layout and they give you uh, the gray rough layout and you need to design on top of it and to put some colors, lighting, etc. So you have a rough base to work on. And sometimes you can create your own. You know, I have some friends when I work on the last movie at Micros. Uh, they use CG all the time, even if they needed to draw some props, etc. But I really like to, to, to draw something in perspective and same for, for your mind. It's important because it's very hard, you know, to, to draw perspective. And here I have uh, TV Paint as this amazing tool to, to create your, your perspective and just to draw your lines using some two points perspective. And it's great, but I, I use it as a tool and so I can focus on my drawing and what I want to, to, to communicate. So I'm using a lot of words to say something very simple, but do anything you want. Do something, uh, if you want to do CG, do CG. If you want to, to draw, draw. Yeah, the importance, is you can create your own technique, you know. We, we don't care the important it's the result and the audience and the other people that watch your art or the things you are doing they only want uh, to see the result you know you know when you're working on when you watch a movie uh, at the cinema or uh, any anywhere else 
you know, you're not like, ah, okay, but they were unlucky, they didn't have a CG, or they didn't have uh, enough drawing or enough time. You, you don't care about that. You just want to, to uh, see the result. And if the film uh, is cool, it's cool for you. you, you are happy. And if it's bad, it's bad. But so you're not like, yeah, it's bad, but they were unlucky, they didn't have the right tools, etc. So the important, it's the results. So yeah, work in, in the condition you like. Here, I, I just drew a, a character, a simple character. So I created, I, I drew a boo-boo to have a scale relationship in my environment, but I, also uh, drew a, um, a simple character and I just drop it on different areas of my canvas. So I just uh, follow my per central perspective lines to put this character. And again, I do that just to compare the proportions of the different elements. And you know, if my uh, character stand in, in the environment, he follows the, the perspective of this environment. So I can draw a flat character and scale it to have a, a tiny character in the environment. And the closer he gets of the camera, the, the he's, he becomes big, you know. And you can use that technique to have uh, to, to just double check if your perspective is good or if it's not good. Sometimes also you can cheat, you know, when we are working on 2D backgrounds sometimes the perspective is not right on some areas or the scale is uh, wrong but again the important is the result if, if, if it's cool just keep it you know. so this is the end of the first part focusing on the layout to summarize the important is to fix as much problem uh, for later on when you will paint so you can only focus on light and color and you can use uh, paper or any software you like the important it's the result so just have fun so this is the introduction for uh, the local color uh, parts so you will see it's weird but uh, on this uh, step and part I will only focus on the local color so I don't mind about light and shadow I will work on that later and here I can only uh, work on the local color of the objects so it's maybe weird for you but you will see later we will apply the light and shadow to this local color pass and you will have and we will have our uh, final picture this technique is great because uh, you can uh, split and change the mood and the local color of your uh, painting. So it's very useful. Uh, as I said, we use this technique when we work on color keys, but also on more defined uh, this illustration. It's a very cool technique. And also sometimes when you have to, some difficulties to paint, it's perfect because you can modify everything uh, all the time. And you will see uh, here I have some elements on the canvas like this part. Uh, later on the painting, I will remove this part and do something else with a column. So it's great, great, great technique. Also, I, I choose to, to have a very complex painting with a lot of details. So maybe it's very scary when, when you have something like that with a lot of pattern, with the ground, ground texture, etc. But as you will as i told you you will see we will finish this painting and it's not that complex so on this step only focus on local color um, the first thing i i will do is to create uh, sorry the first thing i did is to create uh, a group for the layout so i have my layout uh, i would advise you to put a use saturation on the layout because if you're working um, um, following the same tec technique as me, you will hide the background and the local color to double check the relationship with your uh, layout. And for that, I would like to apologize because when I speed up the painting, you will have this uh, clicking part that is very uh, disturbing. You, you see the layout, then the background, then the layout, then the background, and it's maybe a pain for your eyes. So apologize for that. 
for this step i only use one brush it's this brush you only already have it in the brush pack i gave you on one of the first videos it's a very nice brush it's like a painting brush so you can use it if you want to use another brush it's not a problem at all you can also when i paint i don't like sorry i'll go on a layer i don't like to see the brush like that so i just click on the caps locks and I uh, this hide the brush. Uh, as you can see, I'm using Photoshop. Uh, it's this version, but uh, this technique works in every different version. I have a very nice shortcut, so it's Command Q. It's to hide the layer I am working on. So when I work, I I really like to put the layout on the back. As you can see, I've got my layout here and to create a layer on top of it. And I really like to, to paint like that. But after a while, I don't see my layout anymore. So I just click on Command Q and then I can with, I can paint, sorry, on top of it and it's very precise. And so I can compare the layout I'm, I'm working on with the layout I have on the background. So it's a nice technique. I'm not sure a lot of people use this technique because maybe it's a lot of pain for your eyes because you're doing that all the time and uh, yeah, it's not very cool. But if you want to use this technique, go for it. Also, as you can see, I have two layers. I've got the background, but also I've got uh, the ground and the floor. Because I have a pattern and I wasn't sure uh, the perspective of this pattern was right, so I kept another layer with the mask and it's great because later when I paint it I shown my uh, layer I show the I will sh have shown the layer to Lucy and she told me the floor uh, looks very weird so I decided to redo the floor and thanks to my uh, mask and layer I can uh, do it easily also, I create three groups. I try to, to clean my PSD the best I can because uh, when you're working on a studio, you're working with other people and sometimes they work with your PSD. So it's very important to have something very clean. It's not a problem if all the names are like that, but it's important to have only a few layers and uh, some specific groups. When you export your final PSD, then it's very important to have everything very clean and all the names and all the groups with colors so when the other department uh, will work with your psd everything is clean and perfect uh, i think it's almost all i will go through uh, the speed up process and uh, yeah i hope you will enjoy it and uh, thank you very much for your time I've exported the JPEG from TV Paint and I just drop it in Photoshop. Now I will just organize a little bit uh, the layers. I've created a group for the local color and I just clean my brushes to have the, the brushes you have and I use the, the big one. Here the goal is I just created a layer and I will start to put the local colors of the different objects uh, using the layout as a reference. So I put a layer on top of the layout and thanks to, to my uh, shortcut command Q, I can hide this layer so I can compare to with, with the layout uh, behind. So some things are very important for uh, the local color. Here we are only working on the flat areas, a flat color uh, for the object. You need to be careful not to have something too dark nor too bright you can have something very bright but not too dark because you need to think later we will put a multiply layer on top of it so if you have something black and you multiply this black using another uh, dark color you will have something you very very dark <laughs> you will not see anything so that's why you need to have something uh, quite balanced uh, if later you have something that is maybe too dark it's not a problem because uh, thanks to this technique, you can modify the, the colors later. Here, I will start to work on the ground. And as you can see, it's always the same techni technique uh, as the same compared to the, the grid. 
I will duplicate all uh, my uh, tiles and just transform it to put them directly in the perspective. I use the layout as a reference, I transform it and I use that. You will see, and maybe you, you've already seen, I will modify these colors later. I don't like the red checker, I will uh, go for a blue checker. And yeah, that's why sometimes it's important when you have some tiles or something with a lot of details. You just keep a layer on top of everything so if you want to modify it later you can i try to drop some colors on different areas you know uh, some colors i like they will uh, improve they, they will not be the same at the end of the painting because you know i start it's very rough i put some colors on on the left on the right on uh, some elements not on some other elements it's just to have a global idea and later i will just adjust all of this color to have something very balanced to my eyes i don't use any uh, specific technique to choose the colors i just choose colors i like i watch a lot of uh, references on my phone you know I have the Pinterest app and uh, when I'm somewhere and I don't do anything I just check for nice reference and I always have some old libraries or old kitchen reference uh, with a lot of woods and very uh, noble materials and I really wanted to do something like that to have a, a lot of different materials. So I work with metals, with woods, uh, with some uh, tiles. Uh, you know, we will have a lot, a, a huge variety of materials. So I think it's very interesting. Um, it's because I don't have a lot of place when I'm uh, filming my computer, my screen. I don't have the reference here. But most of the time I have another window open with some reference or I have Pinterest uh, on my uh, on the Safari, you know, or I can use pure ref. I don't know if you remember, but I did a video on the subject with uh, how to drag and drop references. And it's a very uh, cool uh, software. I always have it open. And most of the time uh, when I work, you know, for the studios, etc., I, I use it also. It's so cool. It's a great uh, application and great software. Sorry. So if you want, uh, you can take some references to create the local colors of your object. If you want just to go and to start the local colors, but you can, you know, it's not a problem. Maybe you can put a first intention, something you would like to have or you would like to see and later you can just adjust it using some references or some pictures you took so it doesn't matter as i said before the importance is the result if you're happy with the result it's very very important but sometimes you know you're working on studio and you're not happy with the result but it's something that the client wants and uh, yeah that's life <laughs> So I continue, I, I drop some colors on different areas. Here it's very interesting. I have a shortcut, command Y. It's a very nice shortcut because I can check my values all the time. And when I'm working on the local colors, you know, you, you also have a values game between all of these objects. And I try to double check the values. Uh, to explain myself, you see, I want to close the picture. So I want uh, the eyes to enter the picture from the left and then to stop on the right that's why uh, the furniture on the right are uh, they have a very dark color it's something simple and uh, i like to think about that this is camera row it's a very nice tool but i will give you more information about it later i was afraid about the temperature of uh, the local color so i decided to modify the temperature to have something with less yellow also i just create some ver some groups i change the color and i change the name of my layers um, as we talked before you know it's important to have something clean because if you share your psd or if you're working uh, with other people it's very very important to respect them and to have something with the full names etc even if it's only for you maybe 
you will work on a PSD or something and in two years or maybe three months you will need this PSD again and if it's the mess you know you will lose a lot of time and lose yourself so it's important to have a few layers everything name etc I, I, I'm I try to be as clean as I can because yeah I think it's very important I'm again I'm playing with the layout and the color layer you know common queue it's to hide my color layer I just compare with the, the layout to put the colors on the right place uh, still at the moment it's rough but I, I prefer to start with the rough pass on everything to have a little bit of everything everywhere just to see uh, the final look of the picture and then later I will start to add some details and to be more precise as you can see here I try to add uh, some very more precise elements I add some details to this ladder to the window and I will add some bottles and everything else in the kitchen I always think it's nice to start with uh, a lot of information everywhere so you can quickly have the the mood and the idea of your painting and then later you start with the details you know sometimes we are scared we we are scared to 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 do something bad and we start to add details on one place but later maybe you will add more elements and the picture will not be balanced anymore same here you see i i add some details but i will keep it simple and later when we will do the shadows and light i will add more um I will redraw and repaint all of that here it's yeah it's a first step you know I just want to have uh, as much good information as I can here I'm presently I'm painting with the dark uh, color for the tiles but I will remove it later this is great because this technique you can drop some ideas and later if you don't like them you can just remove them here same I'm struggling to uh, detail this and I already when I'm painting and I'd colors to this I'm not happy I don't like this area and later I will just yeah remove it and repaint it so please chill <laughs> work on the things you like and if later you want to change or modify something you can it's not a problem you know it's thanks to the digital we can uh, modify everything we want so we have a lot more freedom compared to a traditional background or drawing uh, sometimes you're working on the studio and you cannot move anything you know they ask you to respect the layout and it's very uh, important but sometimes also you you want to improve the layout and you have some ideas and um, when you you have new ideas the first thing to do is you finish everything you need to, needed to do. You, if you have some uh, retakes, etc., you finish the painting and then you propose something else with the update you would like to propose, and you can show it to your supervisor or to the art director. And uh, I think it's a good thing because sometimes you know when you're working on the layouts, uh, you try to think to everything and as much information as you can but you will miss some things and when we put the color the lighting etc sometimes we discover a tangent or we would like to change the material or the composition a little bit to have something more efficient and and yeah i think it's all right so you can propose something uh, show it to your uh, art director or supervisor and then uh, if they like it yeah it's a nice improvement for the local color you have the choice or to do something very very clean uh, from the start or just to have something rough and then later when you do the light and shadow you can work a little bit on the light and shadow then to clean uh, the local color pass etc I work on an illustration project for someone and the first thing I needed to do is to create a free color keys so I did the same technique because I wasn't sure about what he wanted to have so I did a first uh, draft with the layout then I did some color keys using the technique of the local color and multiply shadow 
it was quite rough and when he he approved the the color key told me yeah i really like that but i don't like the color of that object i don't like um, uh, the composition of this i would like to add more detail to this change the 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 color etc you can do it easily and compared to if you have a painting with only one layer you know if you paint everything like a traditional painting if someone asks you hey i would like to remove uh, uh, this uh, piece of furniture you're like oh okay i need to repaint everything it's uh, it's dreadful so this technique is a good technique when you're working for someone or with other person or if you're working on a color script you can use it just to create you know a first a color script frame for one of your illustration it's a quick technique and you can modify everything so if you don't like the mood the lighting the local color uh, it's not a problem and then you can merge everything and then you paint on top of it or you can merge everything and use it as a reference and paint uh, it this technique works for an environment but if you're working you know on a character or props or anything you can use this technique also it's it's um, it's very cool when i worked on spongebob you know we needed to paint a lot of different uh, props so we had some uh, stupid stuff you know beans uh, so a little bit of anything some cars some, some that kind of stuff and so we had some very rough drawing from uh, the series and we needed to apply local color and then to put light and shadow and we use this technique and why because we needed to to propose a lot of different variation to the art director uh, so if you have your local color of your car you know maybe you create a, a yellow local color then you duplicate the local color and you create a blue etc and so you just need to paint once the the shadows and sector you can just change the local color of your car and have many propositions and compared to if you need to paint every car you know with uh, all the reflection etc it's quite it's it's daunting so that's why it's a very nice technique uh, to work in production but also to have something uh, clean as soon as possible uh, here i try to to complete the, the picture I, I have a lot a lot of details you know i have some small uh, patterns on the on the roof on the on the ceiling sorry i have also some pattern on the ground i have a lot of uh, furniture so it's a very complex picture and sometimes when someone uh, give you that kind of layout you're like whoa i don't know how to do that and that's why again to to work on the local color and then to to put the shadow it's nice because you you're almost sure you will have a nice result at the end because it's uh, yeah it's it's um you're organized so even if at the end you don't like maybe the, the lighting you, you can redo it and improve it and also it's nice because you can uh, show this technique and if someone give you uh, some piece of advice etc you can just quickly try something else you know maybe uh, you show uh, your local le, your final painting to a friend and the friend tells you, ah, but i don't like the color of this it's uh, it looks weird and you're like oh, okay i will just test something else and you change the color quickly because it's on one layer and you can just uh, yeah compare and if it's better you win you know here it's always the same technique i'm working on the ground on the floor i duplicate uh, two squares and i created this uh, floor pattern i just transform it again here i try to keep the flat version because i'm not sure about the perspective of the floor at the moment and so i keep the flat version and and then i transform it and later when i put the shadow i will show this version to lucy and she will give me uh, uh, her point of view because yeah i think it's uh, the perspective is bad so it's important sometimes yeah to, to just keep your uh, layers or backup you know it's not a problem this picture is not heavy you can have a backup folder as you can see i have one i just duplicate my layers when i'm not sure if the next improvement is an improvement 
and uh, if you have some texture some tiles or anything else you can keep it uh, or keep these files uh, on the right folder um, I'm trying some elements you know I, I put some details everywhere and I know most of these elements I will change the color later I will change maybe add more details but uh, I don't mind I just paint I'm I take uh, some pleasure to add details here and there and uh, if I need to change all of that I will later it's important uh, sometimes to just yeah to just paint and maybe you will discover some uh, nice ideas and if you're stuck on something just take a reference even if it's uh, you know i don't know maybe a painting on someone else or background you saw or a, a picture you saw on 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 internet you know you can have your uh, file or folder with the nice references and you can just take them to add some ideas when you're working on on the local color or the layout etc i have something great because i i have a mac and you can choose uh, when you open your folders the first folder to open and i create myself uh, une boîte idée so it's a box full of ideas and these ideas are just pictures i like and i just uh, download drop all of these pictures so sometimes it's it's a picture it's a photo it's a drawing etc sometimes it's just a poem or a, a song i like and i drop all of that in this a big folder and every time i open it i see all of these references and it works you know i think about them a lot and sometimes uh, thanks to these references i have some ideas so so i would advise you to to create um, a folder where you put everything you like in it and sometimes here if you're stuck or if you need uh, fresh ideas you can just jump inside of this folder and find something fresh for here i know i wanted to to paint something uh, complex and i didn't have some very specific uh, references so i i think I, I will have an hard time when i paint because i'm not sure about what i want and sometimes when you're working uh, on your own projects it's it's the main problem because you know when you're working on the studio people uh, tell you yeah do that do that yeah the layout is finished you can work on that no you cannot modify that but when you're working for you you're just free you can do everything you want and sometimes because you have too much freedom you're you're lost that's why i tend to be as much organized as i can so i i don't get lost you know and so when you're working on the painting um, I would advise to, to keep the same process all the time so you know where you're going because when you're starting to work on a painting most of the time some people they, they are not able to see the result in their mind you know sometimes or because you're looking you know you try to do something new to renew yourself and you don't know the result of it that's why it's important to follow a nice process something you like so you know you will have a nice result at the end uh, organization is key so yeah all of that is is important i tend you know i have many different uh, techniques when i paint so this one is the one i use uh, for two years now because i worked on a lot of different color keys and when I started on the color keys, I just uh, paint, you know, I had one layer, I paint everything in one layer and it was nice because it's the technique I prefer, you know, you, you just put some big uh, uh, color areas and then you add some details and um, you saw my, my last, um, my last uh, painting tutorial, they were like that, you know, I just, I just paint and it's so nice. Uh, but then I had a lot of issues, but because when I, sh I show the, these color keys to the art director or the director, they told me, oh yeah, yeah, I don't see that like that. Could you please change the lighting? Could you please change uh, this color and this and this? And I was like, whoa, okay, but uh, I need to redo everything. It's not just you, you, you change the color and that's all. 
and and then after a while i just told myself how, how could i could i manage and what technique could i use to uh to be able to modify everything and i just uh yeah i remember when i was at school learning cg you know when you learn cg uh, when you do a render you have different paths so a pass is uh, the uh, render engine calculates something very specific and the most important pass are the local color so you have the local color of one of your objects or all of the objects so it's exactly what we are painting so when you do a render of the computer graphic picture you have something very flat with all the colors and details then you have a shadow pass so a shadow pass is something um yeah it's it's only the shadows and the light so uh, when it's dark you have shadow when it's uh, bright you have light and if you have a light with a color it's something very uh, bright but with a color in it and you just multiply this shadow uh, with the local color and then we add uh, you can have a lot of different paths you know you have the paths also of speculars so the highlights and then you use a specific software, so a compositing software, where you um, combine all of these passes. And it's how it works, you know, and you have compositing artists. Their job is to composite, composite all of these paths, but also to improve the lighting and colors. And it's what we learn, uh, we've learned when I was at school. So I told myself, okay, but I could just recreate uh, this process, you know. And I talked with a friend of mine and I, I told him I would maybe I can just recreate uh, this process so I can I can paint uh, like a computer will calculate a picture and told me yeah yeah absolutely and he just told me that the the, the bright sources uh, were directly combined with the, the local color so the highlights were inside of the local color so this it's more a problem for me because you know light uh, is a gradient you, you don't have a very flat area of light sometimes it's something a gradient so you have light and then you have the shadows and i wanted to have a, a picture with the colors i could modify you know if someone asked me to modify something i, I can modify uh, every time i want so i just decided i would have my layer of local color then i would have the layer of uh, multiply then the speculars and then on top of it, I can add a few other layers with, um, you know, color balance or exposure or that kind of layer. If I want to uh, slightly improve or modify the color of my picture or add some lights. So because, you know, the computer, he, he, knows, he, he knows where it goes. You know, if you put some parameters, you, you know what you will have here. When we paint, we are not sure about the final uh, uh, results so sometimes you just paint your local colors you're happy with them you put some uh, shadows and then you tell yourself yeah but i would like maybe uh, to have less yellow in my picture and you add a layer on top of all of that and you just remove yellows and then you tell yourself yeah okay i would like to have maybe more light on uh, this area and you create another layer and you add light on this area so it's not a linear process that's why we have most of the time more layers but the important thing is not to have hundreds of layers if you have maybe 10 or 12 layers uh, i think it's all right because if someone asks you to uh, modify something you, you just go through these uh, 12 layers and um, yeah i think it's it's not a problem you know sometimes i think at, at the maximum sometimes i had some very tricky painting to to do and I had maybe uh, 20, uh, 20 layers and you will see most of the layers uh, change the, the main mood of the picture. So if you change, I don't know, a piece of furniture or something specific in the shot, you will not have to modify this layer. One of the layer will, you will need to modify most of the time is the speculars layer. Because if you modify an object, you will need to repaint the spec, the speculars. So, I'm talking about all of that and it's clear in my mind, but if you have any question regarding 
multiply shadows, uh, local color and speculars, please uh, send me a message or just drop a comment and I will try to answer the best as I can. Because yeah, it's this process is the process we use in uh, computer graphic and we can use it in 2D, in 2D, you know, it's very useful. I think if I worked uh, on the background for animation, I would use this technique to do the pre-color keys, but when then later I will paint the full picture. I don't I don't really like to to use this technique to do final picture because you're using different layer so you don't have this uh, a color merging, you know, I like and also uh, I really like to work on one uh, layer. I think it's uh, good for my mind, you know. <laughs> No, no, but it's it's like, you know, when I, I painted in traditional, uh, using traditional gouache, etc. It's it's a lot of pleasure to paint everything on one picture. It's it's stress, you know, you, you, you have a lot of anxiety because if you drop some color or if you do a mistake, you know, it's finished. But it's, it's so it's so cool. You have a very nice feeling when you paint. But here we are very lucky because we have uh, great tools you know it's you can have uh, software for free you know some people they use krita and you can buy now uh, a tablet uh, for cheap because you can buy something very old and it works perfectly and you can paint you know you don't need an amazing computer and amazing stuff you will upgrade later if you work on that or if you work on the studio etc maybe you, you get lucky and you have good material but then you don't need that much to do uh, digital and, it, and and digital is great because uh, you know you can modify everything all the time and this is good because you can do mistakes and if you do some mistakes then you can repair them and when you do some mistakes and you repair them you understand why you did this mistake and so you learn so that's why I think digital is something very cool because I, I started with the digital when I was uh, young. I started lately when I was in a computer graphics school in South of France. And I was in love with the, all the concept art I saw, but also I was in love with the Ghibli movies, you know, the background are gorgeous, the colors, the lighting, the mood, you know, you have this, this texture and this mood in this background. It's so amazing. And I just told myself all the time, oh yeah, I want I want to do that you know and uh, my parents uh, they uh, gave me bought me a tablet for my uh, 18th birthday and I just start uh, when I was 19 you know so it was uh, yeah one year after and a friend of mine just told me yeah you know uh, painting it's not that complex you do that that and I just try and maybe during two years it was completely dreadful I did uh, everything um, yeah it's, I did mistakes all the time but then I, I tried to understand wh what I, I, I was doing and to learn a little bit more about colors and you know you don't need to, to um, understand the spectrum and all of that complex stuff so painting also it's it's a feeling you need to, to do something you like so if it's something uh, wrong but the result is cool you know yeah it's all right we don't mind important it's to take some pleasure and to create a result that uh, the audience can understand and then uh, later when i was it was maybe two years ago i decided i wanted to try gouache so i bought some gouache and I really dislike the gouache because it's uh, dry and it's very specific and hard to to uh, to paint with. And um, I decided to try the poster colors. So uh, again, it's uh, the paint painting that use uh, Ghibli Studio, and it's so cool because you know you you can add a lot of water to it and have some watercolor, but then you can have this opaque uh, painting opaque uh, painting and it's uh, yeah it's amazing to work with that and I, I did I think during one year I painted every evening when I came back from work I just did yeah one painting 
and so I took a picture, I did a, a quick photo study, I tried to understand how to do my first blocking, then to add details, etc. And then I changed the way I paint on Photoshop, you know. Then I decided I wanted some brush that are close to the, the real brushes. So when I paint, I, su I, I follow the same organization and the same process. And I just, uh, yeah, during two months, I tried many, many different brushes. I combined some brushes just to recreate the brushes I like, you know, in real life. And then I create this brush pack. You are the brush pack I, I've shown you. And then I was able to, to paint uh, using the same process than uh, the traditional painting. And uh, so I'm talking about that and here we are doing another process, but I think everything is connected. You know, when you understand one process, you are able to do another process and then you can uh, combine these two process. Here it's what I will do. You know, I, I'm doing this technique, but later I would just merge all the picture and, and do a paint over to add maybe a little bit more life to this painter painting because some areas I would like just to have a nice brush stroke. Here, you know, you have a lot of control on your picture, but maybe at the end it's yeah, it's a little bit cold, but you can uh, modify that. But again, if I was working on movie, when I will work on uh, Boo Boo, the short movie, uh, I think I will use this process to create the color case uh, for the movie. So if I want to modify the colors, I will be able to modify the colors. And then when I will do the final background painting, I will just take the color keys, uh, merge the layer in one layer and paint on top of it. Because, yeah, I think the result will be better this way. But again, you can do uh, and use the technique you like and the technique you prefer or the technique that is uh, um, that fits to what you are doing. Because if you are working on the studio, maybe it's better to use this technique because you have more control. It's maybe the result is is less good, but you have more control. So, yeah, uh, I continue just to come back to the painting. I had some details everywhere. Um, I, I start to have a very complex picture here, but I think I will stop and just move on uh, to the next phase and add light and shadow. Welcome to this new part, uh, the third part of the tutorial. So we'll talk about uh, the background, light and shadow. Uh, I really want to introduce you to the subtractive color. I know it looks very scary. Maybe you learned that at school and it's look, it looks stupid, but it's something very, very, very important. It's the most, for me, important thing we have and we need to understand when we paint. So how does it work? It works very simply. So if we have something red, like a door, and we have only one pure green light that lighten this door, the door will look like black. So maybe you are telling yourself, oh, it's weird, I'm not sure it works, but this is the truth. So if you have a red door like that and something pure green like that, but, and it's the only light source in a dark room, the door will be uh, black. So this is very important. Same for if you have some yellow uh, ground and the room you only have a blue light like that, the ground will look like uh, green. So this is great because we have a fusion mode in Photoshop that can uh, recreate this. So I will hide this layer and create my uh, magenta, cyan and yellow. We have these three layers and we have the multiply mode if I put all this layer and when I put a multiply mode I have exactly the same thing so this multiply uh, fusion mode is amazing because uh, when you work in a color key on the studio sometimes you need to reuse some very specific local color of a character or a background and then you need to apply light and shadow to it 
it's maybe stupid for you for a lot of person but um it's so important when you are working on color scape to respect the color that the other artists put on the characters props and everything so that's why we are using this technique and i will uh, show you the technique just after to um to respect the work of other people so okay alex it's great you, you have some uh, colors circle so how does it work we will create a shadow layer and we will paint most of the things on this shadow layer so how does it work i will we will paint uh, this image with uh, light with it's uh, a sunny day but also i will do later a version on the night with some light spots etc so the thing is we will just create a shadow layer put it in multiply and then we'll just paint on top of it so we'll take a brush oh sorry clicking everywhere to enthusiast and so multiply and using this technique we will create light and shadow so on some areas we will have maybe less light so it's darker we have more shadows but on other areas i will take some white because white we have uh, only light and i will paint the light so this is very a very simple technique and we will create different mood thanks to this technique so you will see uh, while we will uh, paint the this picture how i use this technique and if i show the layer in normal mode the the layer looks like that so we have some opacity but at the end we will have something opaque like that and this works with uh, gray values but also with colors and we will create um, a night version of this picture thanks to colors so if i take a dark blue and i paint the room i have my night version and if i want to put i don't know the moonlight i would just take another uh, blue color something like that so here it's very uh, it's very sim simple but we will paint the picture like that and if i want to put to create an orange spot i take my color and i can i will do it better something like that and i will just create a light spot something like that with maybe the reflection on the ground so i will not talk too much about that because we will have a specific video on that subject but this is the id and how it works uh, for this painting i use the brush set you maybe already have if you don't have it there is there is already a video on that subject and uh, i use these brushes most of the time for the background but also the soft brush this brush at the end i will add some code rays so this is this brush and i think that's all i used so only four brushes and one brush most of the time also i used a lot of different la uh, um, layers and nodes in photoshop so i will directly open the final painting it's not the final painting but it's the most advanced painting using this technique i will just open the shadow panel and so if we only look at the shadow layer so this is the shadow layer and i put this shadow layer on top of the local color so this is the flat local color we created and we painted and i just put multiply and we have the light pass it's important to have something uh, almost flat for the local color so when you put your uh, shadow and light you have something balanced but you will see sometimes you need more light or something darker uh, on your pictures and then you can create new layers on top of it and adjust your painting so i have my compo layer on top of it and as you can see i have not a lot yes a lot of different layers but these layers 
are good because uh, they don't impact too much on the painting. So if I'm working on the studio or on the production and they ask me to change something very drastically on the painting, I can do it easily because I have my local color and my shadow and I, I will just need to update all of this layer. But these layers, sorry, are, uh, most of them, they only change the color of the whole picture. So I will not need to do too many things. I only have a very uh, specific layer. It's speculars. It's the more uh, intense light on the object. And this I will need to repaint it if I need to, to modify an object. So this is, uh, if you're working on color keys or something else, this is maybe the last step you will work on. But sometimes when the layer, uh, when the, the painting is approved, sorry, uh, you will have more time maybe and you can flatten this picture and paint on top of it. Because as you can see, I have a very, uh, not cheesy, but something very soft on this painting. Maybe I want to repaint on top of it to have maybe something a more uh, paint effect. Also something important, we already talked about that, but it's important to, to group all the layers. So if someone is working on your PSD, uh, this person can understand uh, your PSD thanks to the names, etc. As a last piece of information, I use different uh, parameters. So you have a lot of different uh, filter parameters, etc. to modify the color, the mood of your pictures, of your picture. The one I use the most is hue saturation. It's quite simple. You can change the hue on the top line and you can change the saturation also and the lightness. The second one I used is uh, levels. So here you have your black uh, area and a light area. If I move that, I have more light on the picture. So it takes every pixel and you move it up to have more light on, on that pixel. And if I do it, this, it takes all the dark pixel and it, it adds more dark to this pixel. The bottom line is to remove all the dark uh, pixel on your picture and here all the light picture uh, pixel on the picture. If you have some question about that, I can answer. It's just for you to understand what I used. Also, I use vibrance, so you have the saturation on top of it. And vibrance, I think the algorithm is quite different. So if I increase the vibrance, um, you have it looks like you have more saturation, but it's not the same thing compared to the saturation. Sometimes when you saturate the picture, the look is very weird, but the vibrance, you can do it a lot and the picture is still good. So I like to use vibrance, not saturation, but I cannot give you more information on that subject. I don't know the algorithm. Um, I used also exposure when I need to create very intense lights. I really like to use exposure. So you need to be careful because quickly you have some burn areas. If you already have some white pixels on your canvas, uh, you will burn uh, all of this picture. Also, we can use the same texture. If you need to create um, a light with a color in it, you can add a layer on top of it so and you put it in multiply and then you just have to paint uh, so if i wanted to have a magenta light i just do that and i can increase the exposure this will create a magenta spot so here it doesn't work very much because uh, we don't have you uh, values in this picture but if you want to add a spotlight on your picture, you can do that technique. I use also the color balance. If the color balance is quite simple too, in it works on different, you can work only on the highlights, the midtones or shadows. Most of the time I work on the midtones so I can uh, change the color of my midtones. If I want to add more red, I just move on the right 
if I want to remove some reds out more uh, cyan I can do it like that and I really like to use this because most of the time uh, I want to change the the main color of my um, painting so I can add this and change the colors quite simple also I like when I only have one layer I like to use a camera roll so let's find it um, it's in filter but I need to be on the background sorry and I open camera roll filter so this is a very nice filter you can uh, modify a lot of parameters in it and most of the time I only modify the top parameters uh, this is something you can do also when you have a final painting and uh, I will just show it to you but very quickly here it's to uh, change the temp temperature of your uh, picture so if I want something colder I move on the left something warmer on the right uh, same for the tint you will see I will use it later when I paint because um, the local color had a lot of yellow and red in it and I wanted to remove them. But you can also change the contrast, the exposure, you can just remove the highlights or increase the highlights so the highlights are more a uh, white part of your picture. You can change also the texture. And the red part uh, is telling you I'm working on this area. So the texture, as you can see here, it's when you have more contrast on your painting. Same, you can have the clarity. And yeah, you can play with all of this. It's very interesting and you can use them uh, while working on the painting, but also at the end, if you want to modify uh, the painting, uh, a finished painting very great too um, I think it's al almost all uh, all of the things I use I just I will create a layer or so at the end I already uh, did a tip of the month on that subject but I really like to add a noise on top of my painting to create kind of paper texture and to do it I will just create a solid color change the color remove the color and only have a 50% gray I will put it in overlay so I would see nothing I just click on on it and he asked me if I want to rasterize uh, the picture I say okay I go to filter we'll just zoom a little bit so we can see filter noise add noise I will just uh, create a uniform noise monochromatic because I don't want any color on top of it I just click OK filter blur and I click on Gaussian blur and I will just modify the radius and now it creates a paper uh, texture then I can just change the opacity or fill of the picture and I will have something like yeah something like the paper it's cheap but it works and I like to use that technique. Um, I think you have every information. I will uh, talk about this again when we will uh, watch the painting together and I will comment uh, that painting. If you have any question regarding uh, these different elements, please drop a comment or send me a message and I will be happy to answer you. So, I've just cleaned my uh, PSD. I removed the backup folder and I create a new version. And here I just create uh, my multiply file. I started with a dark gray uh, on old picture and I just add light. And as you can see, it's far from being finished, but in a few seconds, I already have a mood you know, on my picture. And this is the essence of this technique. You can have uh, quickly and if you you know working on a small format uh, on the color key as an example you can quickly have something and modify it here i add more light and i try to use this light to create some reflection yeah I, as you can see i create the light uh, on the stairs suddenly we understand uh, the depth of the room i try to to put uh, cast and drop shadows 
presently it's very dark the picture is very dark and uh, the local color you know they are maybe a little bit too much uh, yellow in it so i just decided to create a selective color and to remove a little bit of red and yellow on the sky because it's the brighter uh, bright area i just uh, put some pure whites in it to have uh, the wall light i understand presently the picture is quite dark so i will need later to add some um, modify uh, layers so i will create exposure layer etc to add more light but here i just start to add values and create lights on the painting so you know uh, how you do that you just i just try to take some uh, white and dark colors on the color uh, selection panel on the right so when i put i want to put lights i just choose a white when i put a uh, shadow i just choose a uh, dark gray so here we have uh, the feeling everything is white and gray but I add a little bit of purple in the shadows not to have something too desaturated muddy um, but again if you want to create another mood you know if you have a specific mood in your mind and if you have I don't know if you want some very cold or warm shadows you can just add a red or blue or purple or anything you want in the shadows same if you have maybe a red reddish or yellowish light you just choose a bright yellow and you add it to the light and you would create um, the the right light here as always i really like to jump on different areas you know to start on the left right left go on uh, detail then uh, work on the big areas so i just start to work on a little bit of everything to have uh, yeah the mood of the picture so uh, it's important also when i work on a color key i try in a few uh, brush strokes to have the final ID of the painting you know what I'm going to because then you can add detail for uh, I don't know 10 hours to have some subtle uh, elements some subtle reflection etc but if you don't have the, the right mood start at the beginning uh, the, the picture will, will be wrong so here um, I just continue to add shadows occlusion everywhere here you know it's a little detail I try to uh, to also you know sometimes it's easy to have a flat picture when you are in a room with a lot of details you know uh, and you don't have you cannot play with a fumato you don't have a perspective uh, like when you are outside you know when you are outside the when you are far uh, you get some blue of the sky you know but here because it's a very tiny room you need to play with the short depth of the room but everything needs to to be um, you need to understand the picture because if everything has the same values you know the picture will be flat and when the viewer watch to this picture it will um, need to focus hard to understand uh, what is it so here and later you will see i will add more layers to uh, split in two parts this room so I will have the two windows and the stairs and then I will have the middle of the room with the table and the furniture on the right and oven etc. And I will try really to have these uh, two flat layers and, and to play with it. Same, the, the floor is very interesting because we have a lot of uh, reflection. I like this kind of things, you know, when you have a tile and you can add some reflection, it's so great and i will uh, use it to uh, separate the layer as you can see here i think the picture is too dark so i just brighten everything i use um, a level so i put it on top of everything again i will try not to have too many layers but you will see i will have almost 10 layers at the end to uh, modify this picture and here just to brighten and to have something like um, yeah i want the picture to be in, in a neutral day you know so i just uh, modify the, the white point to have more white in the windows as you can see i, mo I modified 
the tiles on the floor because you see told me the perspective was uh, weird and she was right so I modify everything uh, the tiles because I transform them they are very uh, blurred and weird and it's not a problem I will paint repaint them later so I keep them like that because here I just try to focus on the values I add shadows everywhere I try to add yeah piece reflections it's always nice to have reflection on the floor you know it's so believable when you have some and I don't mind about the tiles on the ground or the things I don't like about the local color here I just try to drop everything a little bit of everything same you will see later I would change a lot of local colors because as you can see presently the picture we have too many reds everywhere you know the woods are red the carpet are red uh, we have these huge windows with red the door on uh, is red and so we have this reddish muddy weird uh, mood and I, I want to have something uh, balanced you know I want to have a lot of object a variety but a variety of colors so to have something where you don't look at the same colors on two elements because you know maybe the person that built this um, this kitchen they bought uh, some uh, furniture from different areas you know so the woods will not be the same uh, the chair maybe they have a slightly different colors because it's not the same um, trunk you know you need to think about all of that sometimes it looks stupid but these kind of details uh, it can give life uh, to your painting so just think about that and that's why sometimes it's interesting to drop a lot of references references um, at the beginning so you can uh, anticipate and have all of this variety so i continue to to work on the ties here because you are not in my mind but i can tell you i start to be uh, not happy about the tile size i think the tiles are, are huge at the moment so i know i will remove them same i don't like the um, the the colon in between the two windows uh, yeah it it's very weird i have some perspective issues here on this area but uh, also on this one so i know i will need to re to modify them uh, inside of the table i have the wrong perspective you know on a piece of wood on the bottom same the chairs i'm not happy about the legs so i will need to update them later and so i create in my mind a list of all the things i will need to modify later sometimes uh, if you are organized you can put all of that on a piece of paper but for me uh, i try i train to keep all of that in mind and also i don't want to modify all of that uh, suddenly because here when i decide to focus on light and shadow i focus on light and shadow i do a first pass and then i remove remove and update um, the wrong things i saw same the some i have a lot of uh, perspective issues uh, I, I was not able to uh, repair all of them you know and at, in the final painting you have maybe something uh, a weir weird scale between the table and the furniture but yeah you know everything came from my uh, mind so uh, it's not perfect but i try to do my best you know and uh, sometimes that's why if i use some cg i think i would have less um, problems but i think it was interesting to start from scratch use um, you know old old school perspective to do the layout then to, to paint the colors only using uh, the colors i want you know i like and uh, i have some issues all around the picture like this plant you know the, the plant is quite flat it's not that possible to have a plant uh, here but uh, you know i don't mind because i, I like this kind of thing same the, the the stair you know why do we have a stair here it's weird isn't it but uh, yeah i like this kind of environment where you have some secret places etc so from the beginning i knew the final picture would not be perfect but i tried to uh, to create something believable and to avoid as much problems as i can so just to come back to the list 
of issues you know here in my mind i i have a lot of things i want to to fix here as an example the the, the tools on the right they are huge later i will repaint them to have something uh smaller uh, same here i don't like uh, all of this area so I, I, I will repaint them but it's nice to to keep them uh, keep all of that in mind also i apologize when i uh, do I, when i did the obs recording as you can see i had an artifact on the top right um, it will disappear uh, later but i'm sorry for uh, for this i don't know why it came out uh, you know technology some sometimes it's uh, full of surprises but uh, i think it's not here for a long time and it will disappear for the end of the tutorial again i try to to add occlusion to to add some interesting um, things sometimes we most of the time we forget but you have a thing that that's called occlusion as i said it's between two surfaces you know you have less uh, bounce slides so you have some dark uh, areas and most of the time we don't paint them but uh, on your final painting if you use a different technique you can just try to create a layer on top of your fin final painting painting sorry you take a soft brush and you paint the occlusion and you would see it's amazing the depth you will uh, win in your painting i think one of the next uh, tips of the month i will do a tutorial on that because i work you know uh, uh, with uh, grant alexander on uh, um, matthias de Clair project you know they are working on a short movie and grant alexander was the art director and we worked on very old school 2d backgrounds and every time i send him uh, my background he came with a new layer and occlusion and you know the after and before it's 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 amazing occlusion it's a great thing and again, again when you are doing a, a computer computer sorry graphic render you will have a pass of occlusion and sometimes you can composite uh, the occlusion on top of everything at the end and you will win a lot of depth and volume so just think about that it's a little thing but it helps uh, i think i will do a, a tip of the month on um, on that subject here i try to split between lights and dark at the moment i'm not happy because the painting is quite flat and i don't like the color look at all these reds so i try i, I play with a uh, color balance and i had blue in the picture i had a little bit of magenta also and i try to remove all that red here as you can see when i'm not sure about something i can just save another version of my background so i just save a first version with all of that and then i created a second version as i said i created an exposure layer just to add more light to the painting i'm a little bit scared because at the moment i uh, the painting i have a lot of contrast look at this dark in the front and yeah you know the lighting and the mood is weird so i will try to improve it later and uh, here as you can see uh, most of the time i try to uh, to have less layer so i merge some layers i remove some layers to keep only uh, the one i really need here it's interesting sometimes the speakers i really like and the reflection i create an exposure layer because the exposure will add light to your color but also um, it will change your color so you have more saturation in it and so i like to play and to create my uh, reflection with that you know i have a, a nice render at the end so if you're working on props or environment and you want to create some visual interesting elements you can create an exposure layer uh, you move the exposure and you use it to create some uh, nice juicy speculars here oh this is a nice technique when i was at l'atelier we talked with the art director florent and we talked about when you work a long time on a picture it's hard to uh, have a step back and and to have a fresh eye 
uh, on your painting and see all the issues and he told me when he has this kind of problem it just flip the picture so you can flip it horizontally or this vertically and this will help you to have a new eye on your uh, picture so it's very interesting also you can uh, put the picture in uh, black and white so you can check the values and only focus on that Also, as you can see on top of the local color, I, I, I started to change the, the, the colors. The trees, I didn't like the trees, you know, they were maybe too saturated. And when I, I showed the picture to uh, Lucy, she told me, yeah, the, the trees, they are oversaturated. So I just removed some saturation. Also, look at the table. Before I had a lot of red in that table, I just prefer to remove all of them. On the front column, also I remove all the red. Here I will try to have a blue. Yeah, look at that. I just remove the red to have blue. I worked also on the stairs. I tried to remove uh, the color. The wall, I didn't like the, the pale yellow I had on the wall. Uh, the setting sorry so i just remove change the color on the this piece of furniture i remove the color the red in it here i will try to have something more purple uh here so i change the color this is so great you know i have one layer with all my local colors and here because i have my shadow i can start to update these local colors to have something less um, um yeah less less red because because I choose the colors I color pick inside of my picture, you know, I kept almost the same uh, um, color. So that's why I had a lot of yellow and reds all around the picture. Here, as I said, I've created a 50% gray layer. I put it in overlay. I added a nice um, grain in it, blur it and just move the field so I can have this paper texture on top of my uh, painting also what you can do you can just scan a piece of paper and just put it on top of your painting so you will have this nice grain you know there are a lot of different techniques i think uh, later i will do this maybe i will scan a texture of paper to have something maybe more believable and i will uh, give it to you it's better maybe compared to the grain here because I like this style, I just add a little bit of dark lines all around the objects, you know. Also, it helps to define the objects to have that. So I just, uh, on the foreground, do it. You will see on, on the background, so the stairs and the windows, I will, don't, I will not apply any dark line. So why? Because I really want to split this picture in two parts, the foreground and the background. And even if it's in one room, you know, I have these two, um, two areas. And also, if I put some dark lines all around the windows, you know, I will have this weird thing where it's the, the light source of the picture, but I have some dark lines, so we don't understand. Here, because it's in the shadow, it works, uh, I think, it works perfectly. And also, I really like to put dark lines quickly because it helps to define the objects. And sometimes you don't have to do too, too much painting on one object. You can just put the lines and the main shading works perfectly. So, uh, as I told you, I apply them everywhere. You will see later, they are maybe a little bit thick on these elements. I will try to shrink them. But uh, presently, yeah, I have the same size everywhere. I really like this style, you know, to put a black line. So you have, um, it's a combination between painting and drawing. And uh, yeah, I think I really like that. Because sometimes just to have, you know, also it helps to define a style. Because it's, yeah, we keep the lines and we have the painting behind. So it's. A stylistic decision and to be honest uh, it's the same 
I, I copied um, Ghibli's background because sometimes they add black lines like that and I think it's very very appealing and uh, I would advise if you like this kind of background you can study all the Ghibli's background they are so gorgeous you know and because it's traditional they took some decision it's amazing and it's so it's very very interesting also to uh, learn from um, uh, gouache so here it's a very interesting thing you know i was I, I wasn't happy of the middle part so i decided i want something new so i just had the compositing folder i had the multi i hide the multiply file also and i just work on my local color it's the same thing when um, the art director or supervisor give you some retakes and ask you to update something sometimes it's huge like that you know it's a huge retake because i don't like uh, these two elements and i need to redesign them and you just hide the layers on top and you can only focus on shape and colors so here as you can see I, i'm not sure about what i want so i try something at first then i tell myself maybe i can go for a colon i don't know maybe it's weird i paint quickly i deform i think same here for the piece of furniture in the middle i don't like it i flip the canvas so, so it's so great to flip the canvas to have a fresh eye on your uh, picture here as you can see it's really it's a cheap painting local color but it's enough to to um, yeah to find an id and here i try that the colon and i tell myself yeah i think it's a good idea yeah it matches to the to the environment so let's go for it and i try to define it a little bit more same here i understand the, the size of the tile remember i told you i wasn't happy of the tiles i just repaint them here i try to redefine the windows the tiles same to add patterns because i added the colon i had more ideas to um and more i wanted to add more details to this here i decide also i have the same colon on the two parts so i just paint it and it's always hard uh, because here i need to work on the color and the volume so i'm struggling a little bit to find the right volume and the right perspective yeah as you can see you know the, the perspective wasn't right so i needed to to scale it and because I'm lazy, I try to go on uh, other <laughs> areas. Same here, the windows, I tell myself, yeah, the, the windows are huge, you know, I need to add maybe more definitions and more uh, elements to it to have something maybe right in the scale. So I just add some uh, details. I add, I remove. Here, I wanted to have a marble, so I just add some quick variation in it. And here, as I told you, I will try to redefine all the tiles. Here, I have this yellow line. I don't know what it was. So I just remove it. Here, I will add a flower just to help to the composition. It's not a flower, so it's a plant. So I will add something, you know, because it was also empty. And to have this plant, I think it helps to, to have a balanced composition. Again, it's only my point of view, maybe you think differently. Here, I continue to define the pattern. I just cheat a little bit. As you can see, outside, I add a brighter color. Sometimes you can help uh, the multiply layer and directly add some bright color uh, on, the, on the local color why i do that because i know most of the time the light will come from the outside of the windows so i can have something brighter outside and i already know i want to do a daylight painting so the one i'm working on and i will do uh, a night nighttime painting and i know for the nighttime painting the moon will be outside and i will have again an outside lighting so i told myself yeah okay uh, let's cheat and put some bright colors outside of the wood as i told you i'm working on on the tiles i try to to have something smaller because uh, before it was so huge you know 
and uh, I have some issues from the scales. I told you so the, the ground the tiles on the floor they were sharp and blurry. I just repaint them quickly. Uh, it's not uh, perfect here but I, I'm quite happy with it and and you know I don't want to do something perfectly clean. I want you know it's made by hand so I really want to, to keep this uh, hand hand uh, creation. Uh, I'm quite happy with the colon, so I, I just try to work on it. At the moment, I dislike the lighting of the mood, you know, the, the look at this room, it's very dark, so I will need later to add brightness to it. But at the moment, I'm just focusing on the updated version. As I told you, it's so nice because here I modify, you know, the local color, and then I just need to modify the, the multiply layer, and yeah. That's, that's done, I did my update. And if I was working on a flat picture, you know, flat painting, and they told me, oh, we would like to add a colon here, I would have been, oh my God, need to do everything again. But here, yeah, it's, it's all right. I created a new exposure layer because I wanted, as I told you, to split the foreground and background in two different parts. And I think to add some uh, bright color on the background here, I think it's, it's really better. I have more depth in this room. The windows is quite um, cheesy at the moment, so I try to add more contrast. So it will become less cheesy, but at the moment I have a lot of contrast in this picture. And I told myself uh, wh while I was painting, I was really happy with the, the, the first version I did of this picture, you know, after maybe uh, uh, 10 minutes of work, I had something very soft. I had the first mood in this picture and I think I added too much contrast to this picture. So sometimes you need to be careful because it's easy to have this uh, contrasty uh, effect. And uh, later when I will paint this picture, I will, tr I will try to remove all of that. So to have some subtle variations, subtle variations. I continue to add occlusions, to add contrast, to have a lighting more believable. I compare, you know, with the old version because sometimes you do an update and it's a lot of work and you compare with the old version and you're like, damn, it was better before. And so because you saved a new version, you can uh, take the old version and use it as a reference. As you can see also, everything is blurred at the moment. My local color is far from, from being uh, totally clean. My shadows are quite rough. So I have this uh, cheesy effect on my painting. Presently, it's not a problem because I, I don't try to, to clean everything. I just try to, to uh, uh, drop all the important ideas uh, to have the lighting I want, to add some speakers on the right areas. And later you will see, I will add the multiply layer. I will add uh, all the modification effects and just clean the local color. But here, yeah, try to put uh, IDs. Same, you know, for the windows, I wasn't sure how to communicate. I had a class, so I just cheat and do something uh, cheap. I just add a hard spec on the windows so we understand that. Here for the carpet, because it's very important, you know, it's in front of us, I try to add some details. Same, I add reflection everywhere. Sometimes uh, I don't know how to fix a problem, so I just jump on another area of the picture and I just define this area. Here, you know, I try to avoid this area because I'm not happy. You know, the, the, lock, the look is very bad and I know later I will need to redo the local color all of this uh, furniture, green furniture. Here I add the windows reflection, it's always nice to have something. Sometimes, you know, the local color and the shadow are not in the same area, you just need to uh, move them so they can fit. I try to add some details on, on the, the table to have these wood fillings. Later I know I will need to repaint the chair. Look at that, I'm, I'm repainting the chairs because I forget to paint them behind. And yeah, sometimes sometimes you forget things, and again, it's not a problem. You can do them later. You know, 
it's important to have everything uh, well organized so when you need to add or remove an object you can do it easily i try to add black lines everywhere but i think with a little bit of step back you know uh, i think i have yeah I, i'm not that happy with that picture because it's very contrasty i, I wanted to have something uh, soft you know to have a quiet mood and i think i don't i don't have it so when i will do the paint over i will try to uh, remove this art contrast effect and paint a little bit more to have something better but at the moment i try to do my best and sometimes yeah sometimes you need to, to work out to, to find the right result you know i did a lot a lot of backgrounds at the moment and on different styles and every time i paint every time i struggle and i struggle to find the, the best results even if i have the painting in my mind you know i know what i want to, to have it's always hard to to have exactly the re result you want it but that's why we need to work hard to to find it you know and here also it's very specific because i'm using uh, a technique so i can modify everything and it's not the easier you know when i want to paint and remove contrast on that i need to adjust a few layers so yeah it's not the best technique to, to, to have the, a soft feeling it's hard to control but it's a very good technique and I will uh, fix these problems later. Here I try to add again some uh, shadows. I already know I will need to repaint all the windows because the windows, you know, they are too blurry at the moment and I'm not happy with the render. So again, I will, after a while, I would just hide the multiply layer and just repaint the wood for something straighter. I don't know for the tiles if I want to have some volumes or if I just want to have a pattern. So I just put some bright and dark values here and later I will soften them and clean them. But I'm not sure, you know. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes you're not sure about something on an area of your painting. So just leave it and you will work on that later. Here I try to add more bright lights outside to have uh, the feeling of the light that comes outside because at the moment you know everything were dark so we we will we didn't have the volume i wanted to have so i just try to fix that same for the drop shadow as you can see the drop shadow of the window on on the wall it's quite cheap but i think it works you know but it's not that believable again i don't have a lot of this painting is not believable but uh, again it was most a concept I, I tried to propose an idea of environment and again this kind of picture is very very hard to do you know you have a lot of objects everywhere a lot of colors and a lot of different materials so it's a, it's quite a challenge but um, yeah i wanted to do that kind of um, painting for the tutorial so you can see how to manage something with a lot of details because i, I remember when i was on spongebob you know once they asked me to to paint in one oh, no it was two days sorry a casino so i needed to paint the casino all the the the, the games inside of the casino and there were a lot of different uh, furniture, tables, elements, doors, lights everywhere. And I was like, oh my God, but uh, it's a lot of details. And so I just started to, to work on the local color. So I put all my woods, I control, I just put the screens where I wanted to have the screens. And then I worked on the shadow pass. And you can be sure after a while they give me a lot of uh, retakes and so because i had everything on different layers i modify all of that not easily but i could do it without redoing all of my painting so i'm sorry i repeat myself but i think after a while you will understand why this technique is great and uh, yeah also i did this painting in two days 
and it's very interesting because um, during one another day I didn't work on that painting so I can rest my eye and while I, I'm watching again this video and commented it I'm not yeah I'm not happy of that painting I really need to to work a little bit more on the values and at the moment I have some weird materials here it's funny I'm working on the um, on the god rays outside so it's always help to have a light direction but also to understand where comes the light but also to, to give a mood to to a picture you know it's like you have some particles in the air and you have uh, the light that comes from comes through outside i wasn't sure about the bright whites i had on the top left so i decided just to uh, add colors in it so i use the selective color and i choose the whites and i just add magenta into them so as you can see this is the result i have it's more like an evening mood and yeah i'm double checking my values also at the moment i'm not happy about the values as you can see the painting is quite flat and here i try to have a darker uh, ground floor so I just created a hue saturation and I darken the floor. And then later you will see I will take all the background and just add another layer and brighten all of that. For the wall, again I wasn't happy about the colors, maybe too um, too lame. So I decided I wanted to add more density to this color. So I just uh, check my uh, local color. Uh, create a U saturation and yeah I just change color again I wanted to have more variations into the the woods so I just select all the different woods and I change the color so I don't have the same colors on two piece of wood you can use different techniques to do that so you can use the U saturation you can use vibrance also because if you remove some saturation on the woods you can have different variations and you can also create selective color and uh, yeah remove some colors inside of specific uh, color here i created another layer so it's a level i just remove all the black points with the bottom uh, line and just to create more depth to this room also i thought i had too much red and in yellow and i just decided to remove uh, some of them as you can see i try to clean my uh, psd because i start to have a lot of layer and i didn't rename it i removed the layers i don't use to have something uh, clean here on the layers i just changed the name so i know what the layers are doing because when i will open this layer in a few days it's easier you know you know as you can see i had a layer to add vibrance to some areas or to remove contrast or to change the white because maybe in two days when i will open my psd maybe i was like what but what i what i've done on the whites i need to remove that and because i have the layer i can remove that <laughs> now but it's I, I try to be very organized because when i started to work you know uh, I was a mess. I work on one layer and when I gave my uh, PSD to other people, they were like, oh, okay, uh, where is the PSD? And I was like, but you have the PSD. And they told me, but there is only one layer. And I say, yeah, no, I work on one layer. And uh, we had a fight and I lost. So today I work with a few layers and it's better for everybody. No, no, it's a, it's a joke, but it's better when you're working on projection to have something clean. Um, it's also for me because I work with some people, you know, they, they had some thousand layers on the PSD, everything were dirty, nothing was named. And when you are in a rush and someone is missing and, uh, you know, not missing, but someone is in holidays and you need to uh, modify his PSD at the last uh, minute because a department needs it and you open it and suddenly you have 100 layers with thousands of groups and you're like, oh my God, but how to manage that? And most of the time, the easy process is 
you merge everything and you save a new PSD and always always you will have some issues later because every time I did that uh, three weeks later they are oh, what is this PSD with only one layer etc etc that's why we need to be uh, clean for everybody and so to avoid any new fights <laughs> Here I only focus on the local color. I try to clean the woods as I told you because they were quite blurry. I just uh, add details also because it's a huge part of the picture. So I wanted to have maybe some specific uh, pattern on the wood. So I don't know what is it. It's maybe different kind of wood on one on the windows. And here I try to clean the table and everything and you will see uh, later I will need to redo uh, a lot of the furnitures because they are too rough to, to, to work on them. So I'm talking about this specific area here. Here the columns, more details everywhere. Sometimes you know you're painting a lot on the shadows etc. And you will see you have this um, cheesy effect on all the whole picture. And when you have this cheesy effect is or you have too many layers with uh, color variations and levels etc or it's because the local color it's too rough and then you need to hide everything and just work a little bit more on the local color so you clean everything to have maybe sharper edges and then you update the multiplied layer on top of everything but if you're working on color keys, honestly, you don't need that. Uh, it's more if you're working on an illustration or if you need to create an illustration for a client, you know, you need the illustration to be very clean. And so it's important yeah, to, to, to manage that. Here I'm working on something and at the end I will not be happy. So maybe I will later need to update it again. You know, it's it's a lot of struggle working on this kind of environment because it there are a lot of details and you try things and doesn't work and you need to redo them. But when you redo them, um, it doesn't work with the rest. And here I try to add some bottles and to be honest, it's, it's quite ugly. So I think later I will need to improve that. Um, I, I don't do it in this pass, but I will try to improve this in the last pass uh, when I do um, a paint over. But yeah, I drop some ideas. I drop, I try to, to frame all of that to hide some tiny details, but sometimes when it's too abstract and you have too many details, it becomes, yeah, dirty, quite dirty. And so. Sometimes you need to be careful because um, when you're working on the shadows, etc., you have maybe some and you, you modified some colors, you know. Oh, look at that. I just modified the perspective. You know, I told you before I wasn't happy with this piece of furniture, so I, I just modified it. And yeah, you just be careful when you look at there on the left, I have some red variation. You need to clean that because you will have some weird effects at the end when you, you have your multiply layer on top of something with the gradient of color. So you need to have flat areas and to have something quite clean. Here I try to add details everywhere, but I know it doesn't work. So I will need to repaint all the tools on the right, but I keep that for later because I'm a lazy person. Haha. <laughs> Here I keep the plans very simple. I try to apply uh, the pattern and I understand it's quite tricky. So I will take the right windows and duplicate all the pattern later to put it on the left window. I think it's easier because to repaint everything in perspective, it's very complex. I just try to add more details on the tiles, but it doesn't, it didn't work. So I just, uh, yeah. So here I just add details, but I will take the right window. It's easier sometimes to just deform and uh, put it in, a, in the other place. Yeah, like that. I really like to do this technique. Uh, you can on the same layer duplicate an element. You can create a selection of this element and you just click on command if you are on the Mac. I don't know I don't know the sorry the key for 
uh, a PC, but I think you, you can check control or something like that and you can just duplicate the pixel you can transform them and put them directly on the same layer so you don't need to duplicate everything as i told you i wasn't happy with the doors and everything was quite dirty so i just create a white uh, layer so i can work simply here i will create one door and then i will duplicate this door to and put them in perspective with the common t uh, technique you know so I will move it. First I try only with one door and I told myself but what, what I am doing. I will just duplicate all the doors and put them directly. So I count the door. Here it doesn't work. I need more doors. I transform them. Yeah, I'm happy. So I will do the same thing on the other side. I don't have the right number. So I need more doors. I apply them. I just uh, double check if it works with the old version. It works. I just had a little bit of variation in the middle, not to have the same things. I add the handles also. And I will just create a mask to clean everything and to put everything in perspective. Then I merge everything and I, it's done, you know. And yeah, you know, I worked a while on the shadows, etc. But I wasn't happy with this part, so I will redo it. And later I will redo the shadows and it's not a problem. I continued to add details everywhere and while I was painting all that I told myself but why you choose something that complex you know <laughs> it's so complex I have some tiny details all around the picture you know yeah it's very dreadful but I like it that's why it's dreadful here I need to add um, also it's very important to, to close all your shapes because uh, for the eye to understand a window you need you know to 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 have a very clean window if your shapes are, are not completely finished they, if they are blurred not clean sometimes it's it's a mess to understand and most often if you have a simple subject you know you can you can be rough but when you have a lot of objects if everything is abstract you know it's a mess for the viewer so you can have more abstraction when you have some elements that are far. Look at that uh, door behind um, after the stair, you know. It's very simple. I have only uh, three brush strokes and it's enough. But on the foreground, like these chairs, I need a lot of details because I, I need the viewer to understand its chairs. They need to understand the material of the chairs because it's in the foreground. And I want something to be believable, so I need to uh, add all of that. It's very important. Uh, in my point of view, uh, maybe you want something to be more abstract. It's not a problem, but here uh, my goal, my stylistic goal is for uh, everybody to understand materials. Here, I, I wasn't happy of the empty space I had. Uh, so I was just thinking what can I put in there and I decided to add a wooden box a box made of wood and I start with this first as you can see I just added on the local color the handle to have uh, um, something you know when I will put the shadows I know where the handle is on the later I was not happy of this empty piece of wood so I decided to add more details same on the carpet maybe to add a pattern uh, here I don't know what is it so I just drop some piece of um, of detail to create something believable I decided to to create a, um, to clean a little bit the color pass because I had some abstract elements all around the picture here on the carpet same on the stairs and as you can see, I, I really like and I work like that. I jump on different areas of the pictures to build it up. So I start on the end and also we don't see it, but every time I, I, I paint something, I just de-zoom, watch the whole picture on my uh, Cintiq and then I zoom on the next areas. So every time I double check uh, my windows and the, the, the picture to be sure the modification I did is an improvement, you know. Here I wasn't happy, it was too flat 
and it's really huge i decided to to add some variations on the tiles so something rounder i don't know it adds a lot of details again again and again but uh, i like it so i kept this id also i add some color variation it's very subtle you know it's a green and blue and yeah i think it's better than only blue i added more bottles to this ugly part of the picture i really need to modify that <laughs> And yeah, I did the same here. I just updated the tiles. Uh, I tried some stuff on the colon, but after I remove it, I will keep it simple. And I added some details all around the picture. It's very, yeah, it's a very complex picture. I tried to clean a little bit the chair. As you can see, I kept my floor on another layer. So I just hide the, the floor, I paint the chairs and then I improve the mask just to see the chair. I really want to, to keep the floor on a separate layer because it's an important part of the picture and if I need to modify it later, I really need to, to have it on another layer or this would be a mess. Now I'm working on the, on the tools and I modify them, I modify the perspective, but deep inside of me, I know they are wrong and I will need to paint them later. But because I'm lazy, uh, I keep that for the end. <laughs> Here I will try to add more saturation because it was a little bit cheesy. Um, I, I tried to also to add more saturation to the rest of the picture, but I wasn't happy with that. So I just decided to give the saturation area to the windows. Here I add some useless pattern on the table because we don't see them. We are in the shadow, but you know, useless details are the best. <laughs> I try to work on the handles to add some tiny details everywhere. I just, just jump right here and there. I know I will need to, to redo the shadows on the, on the green doors on the bottom. Uh, here I will just smooth the old shadow and I will repaint the bright and dark areas. I add some speculars also on the uh, handles. I just add speculars everywhere. Uh, maybe I have too many speculars so I will need later to remove some but I keep that for the last part. It's always tricky because the speculars are very interesting. When you have a speculars this give, uh, gives interesting um, texture to your picture, you know. But sometimes you have this suddenly metallic aspect on all your picture if you have too many speculars. So you need to find the right balance between all of that. As you can see, I tried to add color to the, the light layer I created because before it's a, it was a, a neutral white layer and I just added a multiplied layer with some yellow on top of it. So before I add a daylight environment but here it's more yeah a little bit the evening so it's not perfectly bright it's it's in the middle. Before I know I wanted to have a, a perfectly daylight painting but I wanted to play maybe with colors because it's always better to have a yeah, interesting yellow, warm colors. You know, you have two kinds of people. Last time we talked about that and it was very interesting. Some people, they prefer uh, cold pictures and other people, they prefer warm uh, pictures. And I know when I was working uh, at Latelier Animation, most of the guys, they prefer, you know, blue, uh, cold uh, environments. And myself, I really like all the wood you know with red red in them I, I like when the pictures is warm so before i don't know maybe two years ago it was very difficult for me to add blue uh, local color on objects but today i try to balance all of that you know maybe uh, i will do a tutorial on that subject later about the uh, color theory just for you to know how to choose color on the on the background but here as you can see I have all the colors in one picture and it's quite tricky because when you have a lot of different uh, colors 
it's it's hard to read so here i needed to to play with the values and the color to have something uh, you can understand but also i had a lot of blue uh, a lot of wood and the wood is uh, warm because it's red or yellow or anything else and before i don't know if you remember but i had uh, some uh, red tiles on on the, the floor and the whole picture was red and i told myself maybe to, to create some contrast because i have a red environment i can create, can create blue, blue tiles. tiles and when i added the blue tiles to the pictures it's really better so sometimes it's hard to to take that kind of risk but i'm happy i did it and here as i told you i needed to repaint all the tools on the right because the scale of them were huge so i just string them i add some details i'm not sure about what i want to do here because it's something I, I created so it's i don't have any reference here the perspective was wrong here i just added some towels i add some useless details i add some more lines on the on the wall also something I, for, I forgot to mention sometimes if you have if you live with someone or you have family or anybody else you can uh, share your, your work in progress picture with someone else because you know a point of view even if you like your painting or it's hard to uh, to have some feedback from other person it's always nice to have a feedback because sometimes people give you a nice feedback and you can improve your picture you know i'm working uh, on the storyboard on boo boo and uh, i did i'm working on the third version at the moment i wrote uh, all the dialogues and the first version i was very happy i created some music it's it's a ton of work and i've shown the animatic to my family and my girlfriend lucy and they give me uh some nice 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 feedback so i needed to redo an animatic and it was a huge amount of work but i'm so happy i did it and here i'm working on the third pass and i think the first pass is already better compared to to the second and uh, first pass so you know updates retake feedbacks it's hard to listen but as i as i told you before the important is the result and if the result is better compared to the first version it's better because even if you're working for yourself and you're painting for your own pleasure you know the final goal is to share your art with other people and the best it is the best it is <laughs> yeah it's not the best sentence i, I said but uh, i did my best so as you can see, I repainted all the tools on the wall. Um, it's quite, it's not that defined, but I think it's enough. I will paint uh, the shadows after. I already added a lot of details all around that picture. You know, it's uh, crazy, the huge amount of work. You know, it's like working on the, on the city when we were working on the color keys. Uh, at one point we had some cities uh, to paint and the director and art director they wanted us to to create all the the windows you know and to have the reflection inside the windows and so i i did exactly the same technique compared to the tiles on the floor i just create a flat uh, a first black square and i duplicate it and i create all my windows and then i transform all the windows and put them on the building and then you lock the opacity and you create your reflection but at the end you know you have a lot a lot of details and it's quite crazy so i continue to define all of that i'm not sure it's useful to add more details more uh, gold lines but uh, i do it maybe uh, on another version i will remove them and sometimes it's hard to find when you finish a painting or when you need to continue a painting. I'm very lucky because every time I show the painting to Lucy, she, she's able to tell me if it looks finished or if it's not finished. So sometimes she tells me, you should work a little bit more. And I'm like, are you sure? Because for me, it's finished, you know. 
and she told me yes, a little bit more and she's always right sometimes you need to to push a little bit further your painting and this will be better also it depends for uh, what you are working because if you're working on an animation and the painting is only there one second on screen you know I'm not sure you need to define it uh, that much so it depends of your goals you know but here because I wanted to to have something cool I just added as much details as I can and to show you also uh, what we can do you know because if you attack if you start a painting like that on only one layer it's quite tricky honestly it's quite tricky so uh, to do that technique for this environment it's it's cool some people are able to do you know to paint uh, on one layer if you if you um, check the backgrounds on ghibli's you know they only have one layer and they are able to create crazy stuff but i'm not able to to do that and uh, for that kind of environment i think i would use this technique i would use this technique and then after i merge everything and i just paint on top of it and i tell everybody i use only one layer but everybody knows it's a lie <laughs> no no but uh, you see what i mean so i continue to define all of that um to add some light it's important uh, for the local color to be clean so uh, when you put the shadow on top of it you don't have this cheesy weirdo effect I, I decided also because uh, I like this I put some frames all around the walls I add some useless details I just correct some perspective uh, issues I add modify the leaves the frames all that details just to clean a little bit sometimes also it's important to be careful not to have overlaps because you're painting roughly sometimes you have some elements of the background that comes on top of the foreground elements so you just need you know to clean a little bit that so you don't have that problems so here i'm like a crazy dude i'm jumping everywhere just add some tiny details clean everything uh, so when i will put the shadows on top of it I, I i it's almost done to my eyes you know but today with a little bit of step back you know uh, I want to to modify a lot of these elements but this is very interesting you know and also sometimes it's interesting I don't know if you if you are able to record your painting you can record uh, the way you are working so you can see the your process you know because sometimes you may be focusing too much on details and you don't work on the main uh, picture so sometimes it's cool to analyze your work process and so you can uh, improve it here i have some uh, dirty layers i just clean them i add more black lines all around uh, the foregrounds elements i try to to clean the leather add some lights on top of it to have more contrast and so we can e see it easily um I, I i clean the doors at occlusion etc but uh, yeah i have a lot of contrast on these elements here i created a layer on top of everything i just paint uh, with a soft brush a reflection because uh, maybe i have some glass on different elements i try it on the frames but uh, to be honest it's uh, not that useful uh, the carpets were flat sometimes we forget to, to add occlusion and shadows to flat elements but it's important also we didn't see it but on some of the frames the frames are not that flat that flat on the walls i just uh, move and I, I i created an angle to these uh, frames so we have a little gap between the frames and the wall so you know it's, it's a tiny detail but it's more realistic i think i continue to add details everywhere to define the materials and also the volumes here i had a problem on the perspective so i just correct it 
I had some tiny occlusion everywhere. I cleaned the lines. I tried to add details to the wood, but it doesn't work that well. I use another brush to add more details to the woods. It's not extraordinary, but I think it works. I decide to add more speculars everywhere, but I think later I will. Uh, yeah, I will need to modify them. You know, this moment of the painting is always complex because. You, the painting is far from being finished, but it's hard to see uh, what to do, you know. It's hard because you, you focus on details and tr you try to correct areas, but maybe you would need more to focus on uh, huge areas, huge painting areas. But here yeah, I do my best and I struggle and I continue to add details. And I think I will let uh, the future me <laughs> doing a paint over on all of that and try to find the right balance to have less contrast and something maybe more natural because you know i don't choose the the shadow colors of the objects it's a mathematic algorithm but uh not algorithm but it's math that connects the shadow and the light thanks to the multiply layer and the look is quite it's not that natural so that's why it's important sometimes if you have the time and possibility to do paint over and uh, yeah to, to give a more natural aspect uh, to your layers and to your painting. I try to define the windows because again I found they are very cheesy and maybe too much white. I define the reflection of windows. I try to put them on right place everywhere because I forget to put them on some of the windows. It's uh, tiny details but it's important. I like the windows, uh, the, the reflection like that, it's uh, it's cheap and fake, but I don't know why I really like it. Uh, the outside of the picture was burned, so I, I decided to remove some brightness to it to have something more balanced. Here I had some lines all around the windows just to add more occlusion contrast. I tried to not add black lines inside of the windows because you remember I told you it's weird to have light and dark on the same place. Uh, I'm talking precisely about windows, you know, because the light come from, comes from the outside of the windows. If I put a dark line, dark line uh, close to the brightest area of the picture, I think it looks weird. I try to clean as much as I can. Here it's very interesting also, I've, I've, I never mentioned that, but you can just remove the multiply uh, to your layer and just clean the shadow layer. So here it's my shadow layer, as you can see, uh, it's not quite gray, but it's, um, yeah, I have a little bit of purple on some lights on the top right and the middle right I have yellow uh, lights. And also on the colon, because I have trees outside, I have some green reflection, as you can see on the left. And here I thought uh, I missed some uh, elements of the window, so I just decided to paint them. And as the local color, I just uh, command Q to hide my layer and to compare with the local color. It's a... Uh, it's good sometimes to only work on the shadow path so you can see if you, f you forget to put some stuff uh, here because I have a lot of details sometimes I miss some areas and I just clean everything here as you can see I add some occlusion to add more yeah more detail to this picture and uh, yeah I just clean everything here I, d I don't really like this uh, element I think I will need in the future, I didn't do it, but I will need in the future to update all of that because, you know, we don't understand what this, these bottles are. They, are. they all have different colors, but we don't know if it's uh, food or other stuff, so I will focus on that later. I had some tiny details here, my layer was dirty, so I decided to clean them, to, to clean it. Uh, I continue to add some tiny occlusion just for the eyes to have some interesting elements to watch. Sometimes it's interesting to double check your wall painting and to uh, find these 
tiny elements just to create some diversity, visual diversity. I had some issues on the table, so I just clean it. I clean the plants. The plants, I will keep it simple. We, we need to understand that is a plant, but we, I don't need to paint every leaf, you know, because again, I, I already have a lot of details, so that's enough. Here, it's an interesting part. I just uh, paint the tools. So, as you can see, I don't put a gray, uh, perfect gray on the multiply layer, but I ch have chosen uh, um, orange dark color in the shadows, you know, because it's a very specific metal and the reflection are warm. And I think it works great with the blue on, on the, the wall. And uh, yeah, this is the first pass. I hope it was uh, interesting. If you have any question on this, uh, please send me a message and we will move on uh, later on the paint over. Welcome back to this last part of the tutorial. So I wanted to do a paint over this version. So sometimes when you're working on an illustration with all uh, these layers, it's approved and the art director or the supervisor ask you to do a cleanup of your painting. So maybe you have some last updates or uh, you want maybe to change or add more life to your painting. And so you merge everything and you do a paint over. So I wanted to do a paint over and I record a few versions and I worked uh, maybe two hours on these two version, but versions, but unfortunately, uh, they were less good compared to the previous version so i just i will keep this version also we talked uh, about that with lucy sometimes it's good to have uh, another uh, vision on your painting and your work and she told me she prefer the old version so i will just show you the work i did so you can see and uh, let's dive in. So the first thing I did, I wanted to have a strong gold ray. Remember on the last version, I applied a gold ray, but here I wanted um, to have something very present uh, because this helped also uh, for the composition and lighting direction. So I added this gold ray. Then we talked about that previously also. I wanted to remove this part. So I just tried, but it was suddenly empty. As you can see, I also changed the color, but it was blurred and we have uh, an empty area on this uh, part of the picture. So I'm not sure it's a good idea. And at the end, I try uh, a lot of color modification. I try to remove the contrast of the picture to add more details, to remove some black lines so I was to have maybe less contrast on some specific areas also i removed some speakers because i had a lot of speakers everywhere but as you can you, you can see it now the painting is quite cheesy it's flat and it's weird so the old version is better sometimes it happened maybe you can work a few hours or a day on the painting and at the end you understand it's less good but it's worth it to to try but because sometimes it's better, you know, at the end you can find new ideas and sometimes it's not better. So you just waste a lot of time. No, it's a joke. You never waste sometimes. You just learn and continue to practice. Um, just to, as a conclusion, because uh, this was a long tutorial on this painting, we started with a layout. So sometimes uh, you need to, if you're working uh, on your on painting you will need to to create your own uh, layout but if you're working on a production most of the time you already have the layout or um, a storyboard a panel or something like that but here i wanted to uh, show you my process so i i start with a rough i uh, transform some grids to uh, start the drawing and then i correct my uh, perspective with the perspective tool in tv paint then after that, I just export uh, the picture, put it in Photoshop, and I just start my local color. It's not a problem if the colors are, are wrong because I can modify the colors later when I'm doing the light and shadow. 
but it's important to uh, have a strong basis to have all the colors and all the objects on your picture. Then we move on uh, on the last part, so it's the, the light and shadow part. You just create a multiplied layer and you paint the shadows and the light. Then you can uh, create new layers and um, like an exposure layer to modify the lighting of your picture. But as always, try to keep a few layers because if you have many and thousands of layers when someone asks you to modify something or if you just want to try something and change the color or remove an object, it starts to be very complex. So keep it simple. Also, uh, it's important to have a clean PSD. As you can see, I have a few layers here, but I try to put a name on all of these layers. And when I don't have a name, it's because the layer is very simple. But if I export the PSD and give it to someone else, I will rename uh, this layer. Um, I will do another version of this painting, a night version, so you can understand uh, Thanks to this uh, method, we can create different lighting and mood. And uh, I will create a new film to show you that method. I really hope you learned some things during uh, this tutorial. If you have any questions regarding the technique or everything I said or everything I did, uh, please drop a comment or send me a message. I would be very happy to answer you. Enjoy your painting and talk to you in the next one. Bye-bye.